Hello everyone, welcome to today's class and today we are going to learn about the second part on methods of food preservation. So in last session we would have learned in detail about blanching. So we all know what is blanching. It is nothing but uh, when a fruit or vegetable is subjected to a heat treatment normally around 100 degrees Celsius because why we choose this temperature it's because most of the microorganisms die between like 80 to 90 degree Celsius. So this heat treatment will last only for one to two minutes. Okay, so this is called as blanching. And uh, now in today's class, we will learn about sterilization. Okay. Yeah, the methods of preservation. So under this category, under the type preservation and processing by heat or thermal processing. Okay, so we will be learning about the other types like sterilization. Now, what do you mean by thermal processing? It's just a quick brush up. Thermal processing, as I already said, it is a combination of temperature and time required to eliminate a desired number of microorganisms from a food product. Now, there's another term called as food preservation. So, do any one of you know what is food preservation? So, this food preservation is nothing but refers to any one of a number of techniques used to prevent food from spoiling. So, when you keep a food or when you keep a food from spoiling, okay, or uh, from any kind of drastic changes or microbial spoilage or any kind of spoilage that is called as food preservation okay what is food preservation food preservation is nothing but any one or number of techniques that prevents food spoiling so what is food processing it is nothing but by using a combination of temperature and time i mean food processing in the sense of thermal processing it is nothing but using time and temperature to control the microbial population in a given food now this food processing or food preservation can be achieved either by heating or thermal processing or by low temperature or by reducing the water activity or by controlling the storage irradiation or by adding some chemicals or some non thermal processes so these are given processes and by using these processes we can okay we can process or preserve the food now now let's get into the class so what is sterilization sterilization is nothing but a controlled heating process used to completely eliminate all living microorganisms okay it includes thermal resistance pores in milk or other food see this is a complete elimination of all micro all living microorganisms we've studied in last class that blanching no uh, it is not okay a sole form of preservation or processing whereas okay it has to be combined with any other process to increase the shelf life of the product whereas in sterilization okay this is a very important complete elimination okay of microorganisms through heat process is called as sterilization here in sterilization the thermal resistance pores are also removed or eliminated okay especially in milk or in other food okay now how this sterilization can be achieved so this can be achieved by moist heat dry heat filtration irradiation or by chemicals so if any one of you have learned the last session you would be knowing the dry heat okay uh, when you subject a dry heat that is called as oxidation and when you okay when microbes are killed by moist heat it is done by coagulation okay coagulation Okay. microorganisms killed by moist heat are mostly due to coagulation microorganisms killed by dry heat are mostly due to 
oxidation okay that's it now so this aim of sterilization is the destruction of all bacteria including their spores very 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 important okay this during sterilization raw the spores are also destroyed now food products filled in steel sealed containers are exposed to temperatures above 100 degrees celsius okay in blanching it is below okay or equal to 100 degrees celsius whereas in sterilization it is above 100 degree celsius now when we talk about 100 degree celsius above 100 degree celsius it is usually okay between 110 to 121 degree celsius and this temperature is depends on the product okay uh, for each and every product for specific product you have a specific temperature they say that in sterilization process the heat must reach the inside of the product now products are kept for a definite period of time at temperature levels required for the sterilization okay above okay we've learned in last class if it's gonna be for 120 okay 120 degrees celsius the temperature should be for only for the temperature i mean the time should last only for some minutes like one or two minutes not more than that okay now so each and every okay specific product it has a specific temperature and it has a specific time period so this temperature and the time usually depends on the product and the size of the container okay it usually depends on what the product and the size of the container now sterilization process so this sterilization process in the can product can be subdivided into three phases okay we've got a separate topic called canning so we will be learning about canning in later classes but as for now we'll just learn the sterilization process involved in a can product phase one this is called as the heating phase heating medium will be either water or steam okay the product temperature is increased from ambient to the required sterilization temperature so what happens in the heating phase okay uh, uh, the product temperature that is um, any kind of product it will have a particular ambient temperature this ambient temperature will be increased to a sterilization temperature so this phase is called as the heating phase now Phase 2 is called as the holding phase. What do you mean by holding phase? It is nothing but after the product or food is, is subjected to a sterilization temperature, it has to be maintained for some time, okay, for a definite period of time. So that phase is called as the holding phase. Any food product in a sterilization temperature has to be maintained for a definite period of time. This phase is called as the holding phase phase three so this is called as the cooling phase here the temperature in the can is decreased by introduction of cold water into the autoclave so first we heat the heat it towards sterilization temperature then we hold the product at a definite period of time and then we okay decrease the temperature of the can by introducing cold water so that's all for the sterilization process so what are the three phases involved in sterilization process one is the heating phase the other one is a holding phase and the third one is a cooling phase now, sterilization equipment sterilization equipment 
so we have autoclaves and retort okay uh, in order to re uh, reach a temperature above 100 degrees celsius okay sterilization is required okay the thermal treatment has to be performed under pressure in pressure cookers also called autoclaves or retorts okay we know that sterilization is nothing but uh, heating a product okay above 100 degrees celsius this is usually done okay in what pressure cookers okay we call this pressure cookers they are mostly called as autoclaves or retorts in autoclaves or retorts high temperatures are generated either by direct steam injection by heating water up to temperatures over 100 degrees celsius or by combined steam and water heating okay they either do it separately by direct steam injection or by heating water or they combine the steam injection and also the water heating so whatever they do they make sure the temperature is above 100 degree celsius so sterilization equipments are nothing but autoclaves and retorts now the complete destruction of microorganism is known as sterilization this is achieved when the organisms are exposed at 121 degrees celsius to wet heat for 15 minutes this can be accomplished in a pressure cooker so what is a pressure cooker that is nothing but autoclave or as a retort so we saw a range like between 110 to 121 so if it, this is going to be 121 degrees celsius and especially when it is subjected to wet heat the time here required is 15 minutes okay just have a note of the temperature sterilization temperature is mostly 121 degrees celsius when subjected to wet heat it has to be uh, it has to be kept for 15 minutes okay what is this pressure cooker that is used that is the sterilization equipment used they are nothing but the autoclave and and it is on a commercial scale it is pressure retards now we should remember that the storage of a food uh, need not be completely sterile okay in many cases it would be enough if it is commercially sterile so commercially sterile another term is called as the appetite which means foods may contain a very small number of resistant bacterial spores but these will not okay multiply during the food state food storage okay we should be very careful about it okay it is not okay it is not required that the food should be completely sterile there can be some uh like very small number of resistant bacterial spores okay yeah. but we should be very clear that they don't multiply during the food storage now now for most foods a theoretical reduction so one by 112th of the original population is considered satisfactory okay this is very important okay uh, you should have a reduction of 112 okay i'll just change the color 100 and okay one by 10 to the power 12 okay there should be a reduction of one by 10 to the power 12 of the original population so canned foods which are commercially sterile have a shelf life of two years or more okay canned food shelf life would be more than two years this can also be a two mark i mean a one mark question and which is also one mark question the initial microbial population should be reduced to one by like should have a reduction of one by 10 to the power 12. now since the heat required for complete sterilization of food, it, it affects okay, the properties of the food. So, the heat treatment okay, should be very much enough to just destroy the pathogens and toxins. Okay? We should be very careful that this heat should not destroy any kind of properties of food. So, we should make sure that it it only destroys the pathogenic organisms and toxins and it should ensure a desired 
storage life. So thus, to preserve foods by heat with safety, a knowledge of the time-temperature combination required to inactivate the most heat-resistant pathogens in a particular food and the heat penetration characteristics of a particular food, including the can or container, if the food is packed, is required. So what are the knowledge is required for sterilization? What is the knowledge required for sterilization? It is nothing but the time-temperature combination and also the heat penetration characteristics okay two things required okay for sterilization for a perfect sterilization it is the time temperature combination and also the heat penetration characteristics so so what do you mean by sterilization sterilization is nothing but the complete okay elimination of microorganisms and the temperature here when subjected to wet heat is that 121 degrees Celsius for some 15 minutes. What are the two things required for a perfect sterilization? So one is a heat penetration and the other one is a time temperature combination. Okay, so the equipments used for sterilization are called as autoclaves and retort. So that's all with today's class. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.